for some reason zombies right. I just can't get enough but uh, yeah we were t- oh that mo- what was that movie you were telling me about uh, Pontypool did Pontypool? you watch it I downloaded yeah. it I haven't watched it yet I yeah, finally found it it's man different. Pontypool yeah, I yeah. Was, there was a bunch I hadn't you know, I hadn't seen any of these new zombie movies in a while so I just started going crazy okay let's get started I am with what's your what's your full name John DeWall you are going to be our guest for the 11th of October, and you do a couple of things. You're a comic book artist. Uh, writer. Okay, that's right. Yeah, I, I only make that that's distinction. That's a distinction. Because, yeah. Explain that. Yeah, well, with comics, for if you're talking to somebody who's never really read a comic before, they're just aware of you know Batman, Superman, that kind of thing. If you say, even if you say specifically, I write comics. There's the automatic assumption that you draw them as well. Like, it's just this all-encompassing thing. And, uh, no, I, so I do everything but. I write, I edit, I publish, but uh, I so, couldn't draw to save my life. Some people do write and draw their own stuff, like Yonin Vasquez. Uh, Vasquez. Absolutely, or like, uh, like Enki Bilal, or, uh, you know, you get uh, Sam Keith, Frank Miller, those kind of guys. Yeah. But, uh, no, I've... I've never been that talented, so okay. <laughs> I focus on the collaborative effort. You're, you're a renaissance man of another sort. What's the name of the place that you do the news? Oh, so uh, yeah, uh, talkradio1.com. Okay. And that's uh, just a podcast. It's just uh, almost like a typical AM talk radio show, but uh, no censorship. Uh, so yeah, it's hosted by this guy Mark Germain, and I do news and things like that give a different perspective there's uh, a lot of west coast and east coast people so then i chime in from the uh the, from flyover territory exactly do you make a lot of jokes about that oh yeah <laughs> and, and they're made for me a lot of the time okay. too. <laughs> <laughs> you're sort of the whipping boy yeah there was a big conversation about uh hipsters and drinking pbr uh, ironically and the, is that only a midwest thing well that that's what i tried to explain is like it's there are people in the Midwest who drink PBR unironically. Like, oh, yeah. yeah that, okay, I get it now. <laughs> that's, that's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that's just the beer that we actually enjoy at some Some people wear trucker hats because they like trucker hats. <laughs> yeah. Or they're driving a truck. <laughs> or, they're dri- or they're driving a truck. <laughs> yeah. Well, how, how is a trucker hat uniquely suited to someone who's in a truck? Well, it's... <laughs> Yeah, I guess I never thought of it that way before. You know, I mean, they, they they want the sun out of their eyes because, like, the visor at the top of the truck isn't quite enough. And they want to stay cool in the back. And they want to stay cool in the back, That's right? They've already they've already got the, the the wind blowing on them through the vent up front, but in in back, man, that'll that'll heat up. Well, and now that you say you're laying it out like this, like that's innovative. I mean, that's <laughs> <laughs> that's some quality craftsmanship right there. They're thinking ahead. So this is Damian Johnson from Survivors of the Undead Plague. I'm sitting here with uh, MJ Marsh is playing one of the Dead Rising games. Which is it? Two. Really, he's just running around a shopping mall in a tuxedo, <laughs> taking people out with random stuff. Right now, he's using a bow and arrow. Why not? Some people use bows and arrows unironically. <laughs> True. Uh, <laughs> now guy that talks. So and uh, <laughs> no, no, guy that talks. This is definitely ironic. <laughs> yeah. For the show. For the show, uh, you're going to be providing us with uh, some news pieces. You're going to be doing some news reporting for us. That's the plan. That uh, we're then going to use as inspiration. Did you did you have much of a news background, or or were you thinking that you could just sort of pull it off? Uh, or like, are you, did I do I not know this? Are you in, in are you a journalist? No, the exact opposite. Actually, okay. that's a, that's what's been interesting about trying to suss out exactly what it is I'm going to be doing. Is that I don't. Obviously, this is uh, audio here. You can't see me, but I, I, I don't know that I could pass as a newsman in any sort of situation. Uh, he, he's got pajama pants on. Yeah. He's got a beard and long hair. Yeah, yeah, yeah. if I showed up on, on your news one evening, you would, be, you would have a reason to be concerned. I'd listen, though. Well, yeah, yeah I'd be I'm like, hoping. why did they put this guy on? He must have something important to say. <laughs> yeah. Oh, <they're> spear. <laughs> or something's gone very wrong that he's the only one left to represent uh, the station. So that was sort of the reason to go in. Like, uh, what? <laughs> who would who would be giving you the news in a zombie apocalypse? Who may not normally? <laughs> sure, your look is actually slightly reminiscent of uh, one of the people who's on the television in Dawn of the Dead. Uh, slightly, very slightly. There's in Dawn of the Dead. It conti- uh, the television actually continues for quite a while, and there's two pundits who. So you're like one of the pundits. Oh, the guys that are on the debate that's going yeah, on? Yeah, yeah, and the guy, and the guy, the guy eventually is like, gotta stay rational. 
<laughs> gotta stay right. rational. You've got you got you got a little bit of that guy's yeah, yeah. professorial look <laughs> to to yeah. a degree. No, why did you decide to do that? Did you feel like some opinion wasn't being represented on on the air? Uh, have you always wanted to be a journalist secretly? You mean why? Why did I uh, yeah, decide well, to go on this podcast? Or? Yeah. Why did you Why did you put put yourself out there? Uh, well, it, I guess two reasons. One, I had just started doing you know the improv stuff, and that was a big chance. So I thought, what the hell? I'll just throw myself out there for a lot of different things and see okay. what I just say yes to everything. And uh, no, I, it. It was really the exact opposite. They had had legitimate newsmen for a long time, so I just emailed them and said, "Hey, I have no qualifications. I have no no uh, performance background. I have a nasally annoying voice. <laughs> uh, and so let me read your news. Let's see what happens." Okay. And they, is that know, how you sold yourself? That's exactly. I just said I'm going to write an email and be as 100 percent honest and let them know. And they, they think they tried me out as a novelty at first, but they keep having me back. So, and uh, what what would you say? Like, you, what kind of what angle do you normally nail down uh, as well, this nasally annoying journal, <laughs> journalist that you've become? <laughs> well, they thankfully they don't expect too much from me uh, in terms of like investigative reporting, okay. because I made very clear <laughs> out of the gate. I, I have internet access and uh, access to marijuana, and those are going to be my main uh, investigative tools. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, dig deep. Exactly. I'll get real deep. I've got a lot of patience. <laughs> so I, I, uh, I just compile stories that I think Mark or Dina, she's the co-host, Dina Lucido, I try to get stories that I think they're going to have an opinion on. Because uh-huh. if I have to read a story for too long, uninterrupted, uh-huh. I, I bore myself. Okay talk and contribute during the the show itself but when it comes to the news that's probably my least favorite part of the show okay <laughs> because it's just me reading uh but no so it's fun i i don't i intentionally don't read the stories beforehand so uh you know i can fumfer through okay and that's <laughs> fumfer of... that's a good word i've never heard that word before <laughs> is that a word your mom used i i was just gonna say i'm sure i picked it up from my aunt or my mom okay at some point. yeah <laughs> so you also write for comic books What's the name of your... If, I, if anyone were going to go try and find something, what would they look for? Well, <laughs> that's, part of, that's part of the charm of my comics, is that, <laughs> is that they're you very can't. difficult to find. Okay. Uh, no, uh, there is some stuff up on methwolf.com, or you can go to my... Wait, so let's back up. What's oh, it sure. called? Uh, Meth Wolf Presents. Meth Wolf Presents. Meth Wolf Presents. Okay, so that's actually... I think you've actually got a, a pretty hot property with your name there, with like the season finale of Breaking Bad going by, and people like making meth candy what? treats and like Blue Rock <laughs> party favors and whatnot. Like, that's that's people... basically where it came from, watching Breaking Bad. Did it? Just think, you know, oh, what if one of these guys was a werewolf? And then it just turned out... So there's not actually... I a, feel like you're lying. Is that a no, joke? No, no, no. I swear to God. It was... But there, it wasn't like... Uh, Wait, what? I just stumbled on this? <laughs> this is because you were watching Breaking Bad and you thought to yourself... I, I, look, obviously I was a little stoned. Uh, and I, what if one of these guys was also like, a what? werewolf? I was a werewolf. And Two it made me giggle. What's that? Two addictions. Meth <laughs> and, and carnage. And carnage. Well, and that was the other... I yeah, but I, I like uh, I I don't go very much past the concept with these comics. No, that's so as okay. soon as something makes me giggle, I lock it down. Yeah, and I write a few pages, and then I give it to an artist and see if there's anything there. So Meth Wolf has sort of turned into the uh, the Alfred E. Newman of these comics. It's he's just the the he's on every cover. He's is he an addict, or is he, uh, like, he has the thing where he's got cancer and he's making meth in order to, like, fund his kid's college education? There's, there's no story for him. Okay. So it's just, uh, he mostly just appears in static images. He, he, he's a werewolf that looks like he does a lot of meth. Okay. But he, there's, there's really nothing beyond that okay. to him. It's just the packaging for the other stories. And then everything else is a lot of short, you know. Six to twelve page comics, just uh, like uh, liquid TV style. Cool. Well, I'm I'm really excited to see what you're going to give us with uh, your zombie related newscast that you're going to come up. I'm starting to imagine now that you're just sort of going to go with the first idea you have and not think about it too much. <laughs> Which would be bad ones too. I am not in any way saying that that is a that is a bad thing. Well. Because we'll, 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 we'll flesh that out for you. That's okay. So. And that's, see, and that's so initially when you told me about this concept, I don't know how much, I probably, well, look, I'll just be honest. So when you first told me about it, I said, oh, this is, a, 
this is a great concept. Uh, it seemed like a fun idea. So I was like, oh, if you ever need somebody, I think. Then when you took me up on that, I was like, oh. <laughs> you said it so confidently. You were I like, know. "Hey, I'll." You're like, I was like, "Man, he didn't even ask." He was like, "I'll do that." I had a great idea, <laughs> and then, but then as soon as you took me up on it, it was like, "Oh no, this is not. This isn't just one of my stupid comics. This is somebody else's show. Like, I don't want to fuck this up." Oh no, you so. <laughs> you won't. But what was your great idea? Did I? I might go with that great idea that you had. Well, initially. the first idea. So we talked a little bit. Oh, I got to scoot away from this mic. I'm gonna just start grabbing at it. At okay. Some point. So. The first idea, we talked a little bit, my two favorite things about zombie stories, whether it's comics, movies, whatever, there's the two points that I seem drawn to, which is the initial outbreak, the chaos, the before every, society has completely broken down, but everything is collapsing, uh-huh. and how different people deal with all that. Like the last night that you go to sleep in your own bed. Exactly. Kind of thing. Yeah. And, and you know that things are wrong. So, uh, Dawn of the Dead, is a, or Day of the Dead, excuse me, that... Uh, no, no Dawn of the Dead is the one where you see the last, like... Where they're in the apartment building, the SWAT team going yep. into the apartment. Yeah, yep. all that, where, you know, there's still some semblance of society, but it's clearly, it's a... So, I wanted to do something in that, but I also like this notion of totally post out Did you guys ever play the original Resident Evils? Yeah. yeah. Before they went all arcade? Yeah. So that first Resident Evil in particular, you walk around and you find, or like in a Silent Hill, you find these notes lying around. Written by different yep. people, and it's you know. It, I love that part. It's the, the most terrifying part of the game. Is you know, like I, st- I still think about the guy, like the, the the diary of the guy who slowly like devolves, and then the, you, yep. then it, like the last line is like itchy, hungry, it's, and then you try to walk away from it, and he bursts out of the closet, and you're just like, blah, 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 blah. it's one, it's one of the best zombie story moments ever. Yeah, and that so that was that was the initial idea I had was. Oh, this is a guy... If it's somebody reading something on stage, this is a guy who stumbled across one of these notes uh, if that before... You don't know anything about the guy who found it. He just picks it up and he's reading it. And what he's reading gives you insight into this this moment during the outbreak with all... You know, depending on what the setting is. At the time, I was thinking, oh, like, I'm all of America or something. Just keep it simple, flesh it out. But that way, you establish a setting. Uh, you can introduce... A lot of different characters and ideas without elaborating on any of them, <laughs> and then uh, this was a thought, not knowing how any of this stuff really works. But then that way, you guys can see it's at the moment of the note was written, at the moment that the guy found it. There's all these different areas you could you could pick and choose which part of the outbreak basically you want to to build off of. So you're potentially just going to give us a note to find on the floor. Well, yeah, basically, but but right. Well, that was the first thought before the we talked about the uh, the news broadcasts. Oh yeah, well. So I've been working on both basically. Okay. <laughs> okay. But so, what do you think about that? I mean, what it, what? I like it, and uh, you'll if you come to the show, you're gonna see exactly which one we went with. <laughs> so, <laughs> I like that. Uh, this is Damian Johnson with Survivors of the Undead Plague. I have had uh, a pretty fun, sort of distracted interview while uh, currently MJ's character is in a tuxedo covered in blood with so some sort of ladies, yeah. <laughs> some sort of ladies pith helmet attacking <laughs> zombies with a sledgehammer. Turned away for a second. Life is good. Yeah, this is this is weird. Oh, you and you leveled up. I was a little disappointed to see that you leveled up. I was kind of hoping that you just always. Stayed the way you were and had different challenges. Anyway, uh...